Hey everybody, David Warner here with another M365.video SharePoint short. Today we're going to continue in the video series, Replacing SharePoint Designer with Visual Studio Code. We're going to cover part two on how to configure SPGO inside of Visual Studio Code. We're going to cover the topics of configuring, then we're going to see how to download SharePoint files to our local workspace, and then how we can edit those files locally within Visual Studio Code to take advantage of all of the cool things that it has with its IntelliSense and save those files directly back to SharePoint. Let's dive in. Before we configure Visual Studio Code, let's take a quick look at the SharePoint library that holds the files that we'd like to edit. The files I'd like to edit reside here in my style library. Now let's take a look. I've got an SPGO demo folder. Within that, I've got a scripts and a styles folder. And then within each of those are representative JavaScript files and CSS files. Now, if we go back up to the root of my style library, I just wanted to point out that there's no files here. We have a folder which contains subfolders and files. But at the root level of my style library, we see no files. That'll be important later in the video, so I just wanted to make note of that. Now let's jump back into Visual Studio Code and our Windows Explorer and see how we can configure it for editing these files. We'll begin right where we left off in the last video. I've got a folder open here, popwarner.sharepoint.com.sites.spgo-demo, that represents a folder on my local hard drive where I'll request the files that exist in my SharePoint site to be loaded so that I can edit them. Now I've already opened this folder in Visual Studio Code. Here in the background you can see Visual Studio is opened up to that folder location. So we'll just go ahead and click in there. Now we're going to go ahead and configure SPGO to connect to the SharePoint site. To configure SPGO we want to go ahead and engage the command palette. You can always do that by selecting F1 or you can go to the view menu and select command palette. Once that comes up go ahead and type SPGO. You'll see there's a collection of commands here that we can select. Uh, to configure, we're going to go ahead and scroll down and select Configure Workspace. Once we do that, it asks for the domain. Now I've already copied the URL into my clipboard, so I'm just going to go ahead and paste it. We see we're going to connect to popwarner.sharepoint.com, Sites, SPGO Demo. We'll go ahead and select Enter. It asks us how we want to go ahead and save our file when we save it. There's a variety of options here. Create a major version, minor version, do nothing. We want to go ahead and save and keep editing. What that's going to do is, as you see, it says it's going to save the file to the server, but do not publish. Go ahead and select that as the default selection. And then how does it want to authenticate? We're going to go ahead and just select the initial digest, which is used for Office 365. Now that we've provided those configuration properties, you'll notice in the folder we're working within, it's created an spgo.json file. This is just simply a configuration file that includes those properties and lets spgo know how and what and where it's going to connect to the SharePoint site to capture those files that we want to edit. Now it looks like we're ready to connect to our SharePoint site and make a request to pull those files down onto our local hard drive so that we can begin editing them. So to do that, we'll re-engage with the command palette and we'll go ahead and select F1 and we'll type SPGO and we want to go down to populate local workspace and select that. Now it's going to ask for authentication so I've already copied that to my clipboard go ahead and select that it's going to ask me for a password we'll hit enter and you'll notice down here in the lower right it is provided an error remote folders property not configured in workspace configuration file what this error means is that we haven't told SPGO where in our SharePoint site we want to actually pull down the files from. That's not included in the default configuration. So let's go ahead and add that. I've gone ahead and already added the property to my clipboard. So we'll just go ahead and come up to the end of the configuration file and paste that in. What we see the property is called is remote folders. And it's just giving a remote connection, a relative connection to the folder or files that we want to go ahead and include. So let's go ahead and save this and re-execute the request to pull down our local files. Go ahead and save, we'll re-engage the command palette, and we'll select Populate Local Workspace. Now, it gave us a little information down here. It happened very fast and said Populating Local Workspace, but nothing happened. Why is that? It's definitely a gotcha you want to be aware of. Here, we're requesting to include files from our style library, but our style library folder in that library doesn't actually have any files directly in the style library folder. There are folders, scripts, and styles, but there's no files directly within style library. And so it's re requested to bring the files down, but it hasn't actually requested to bring any of the folders and subfiles down. 
So let's go ahead and modify our remote folders property here. There's a couple of ways that we can tell it to pull those files and folders down. The first one is using wildcards. We'll go ahead and add a couple of wildcards. And essentially what we're telling SPGO here to do is to take all folders and all subfiles. Now we know there's two folders within style library, scripts and styles. So we'll go ahead and select save. And now we'll go ahead and re-engage the populate local workspace. We'll select F1, populate local workspace, and we can see success. If we look over in our folder here, we see that it's populated with an SRC folder. It's included our style library. It's included the SPGO demo folder and all of the subfiles, including our scripts and styles. Pretty cool. Now, what if we didn't want to just pull down everything? We didn't want both scripts and styles folders. Well, we could go ahead and modify our remote folders property to include just one or the other or both. It'll just be a more verbose request for the remote folders. Before we make that change to our remote folders property, let's go ahead and delete the local files. Now, I just selected SRC, I'm gonna go ahead and delete. It's important to note that when I do this, I'm not actually deleting the files from SharePoint. I'm just deleting the files from my local folder. Nothing's gonna happen to the files on the actual SharePoint server. They're still gonna be safely uh, living and existing. Nothing is going to happen. Now that we re-baselined our folder to include just the spgo.json configuration file, we can make a modification to our remote folders property to be more verbose and specifically pull down just the scripts. To do that, we're gonna go ahead and replace our wildcards here on our remote folders property to be more specific. We're saying go directly into the spgo demo, then the scripts folder and pull those files down. So we'll go ahead and save that, select F1, populate local workspace. And we see that the SRC folder has been repopulated and the files now include the scripts folder. Now we can also add to that. It's not just a singular property that's available. So in my remote folders, I'm gonna go ahead and hit a comma. I'm gonna paste in a reference to the styles. We'll go ahead and save. I'll hit F1, populate local workspace. And now you see that my styles folder has been added as well. And the styles.css exists there too. We've seen a couple of ways that we can make connections using wildcards or specific folder and file references. But now the fun begins. Let's see how we can edit these files, save them, and actually see them updated directly in SharePoint. What I've done here is set up a split screen of applications. On the left is Visual Studio Code, open to my folder with spgo configuration file and my files pulled down. On the right is the SharePoint site. We're in the spgo scripts folder and we see our scripts.js is right there. Same script that we see opened on the left in Visual Studio Code is the script file we're looking at on the right. The reason why I have them opened up side by side is in the browser, I'm gonna actually open the scripts.js file so that we can see its contents within the browser living in SharePoint. What this is going to allow us to do is actually see the contents of it live updated as we make changes in Visual Studio Code. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the scripts file in the browser and we're gonna see it's opening up so that we can edit it if we wanted to. And we see it's exactly the same. What we see here in Visual Studio Code is what we see here in our browser window. So now I'm gonna go ahead and make some edits within Visual Studio Code. Nothing crazy, just real simple. I'm gonna go ahead and edit spgo demo updated with spgo. I'm gonna save it. And just shortly after we save it, we see that it's been updated directly within SharePoint. How awesome is that? So we're no longer forced to use SharePoint Designer if we want to connect directly to SharePoint and edit JavaScript files or CSS files. We now have the option to connect Visual Studio Code and benefit by all that advanced IntelliSense. For example, console.log, which we're using here in our demo, is not even recognized with IntelliSense in SharePoint Designer. But now, Visual Studio Code, we'll go ahead and select it. We'll come down, console, it sees it, dot L O sees it. This is awesome. I agree. Save, bam, we see the update in SharePoint. Very, very cool. Thanks for watching the video today. I hope you enjoyed seeing how you can configure Visual Studio Code to replace SharePoint Designer for this specific use case. Here's some useful links. Part one of the video series is available there at the top. Second link is a directly to download Visual Studio Code if you haven't already. And the last couple of links will take you to the Visual Studio Code marketplace and directly to the SB Go extension.